In this video, we are going to travel back in time to 1738 into the mind and writings of one Daniel Bernoulli. And by the end of this video, you should be able to see how the famous Bernoulli equation is derived and what assumptions are made in being able to use it. Since we have used small differential elements thus far in fluids to explain certain phenomena, let's go ahead and plop an element down on our sheet of paper that follows a streamline. So here's our fluid element that follows a streamline, and we're going to give it dimensions. We're going to say in the direction of the streamline, it has a dimension of delta s, and normal to the streamline, it has a dimension of delta n. And we're going to give this a thickness of delta y. These coordinates allow us to designate them regardless of what coordinate system this element may fall into. Thus its volume is going to be the following, delta s times delta n times delta y. Now if we go back and visit with Newton to get his second law, which states that the sum of all forces acting in the streamlined direction on the element is going to equal its differential mass times the acceleration in the streamlined direction. Assume that there are no viscous forces or surface tension acting on the particle. And we do know that acceleration is the change in velocity with respect to time. If we use the chain rule, we could rewrite this as the following. The reason we do this is so that we can remove the dt term. And you can see that this term right here is just the velocity in the streamlined direction. So we could rewrite acceleration as the velocity in the streamlined direction times the change in velocity per change in s. So now Newton's second law looks like the following where we've rewritten the acceleration as the velocity times the differential. Now we can pull the density out of the mass term and we get our rewritten Newton's second law. This equation is valid for both compressible and incompressible fluids. And as you'll see as we move along this, one of the main assumptions in using the Bernoulli equation is that we assume it's incompressible. So we need to rewrite the left side of the equation, the sum of all the forces acting on the particle, by collecting all the different forces that are acting in the streamline directions. The first force we're going to start with is gravity, which gives the particle a weight. In our schematic here, the differential weight for the particle does not act in either the direction of the streamline nor that normal to the streamline. So we draw a triangle so that we could calculate what, what those contributions would be. Differential weight can be rewritten as the specific weight times the differential volume. And the contribution in the streamline direction is just going to be sine of theta, where theta marks this angle. We're also going to put a negative sign here just because of the way we've drawn our axes. We have this contribution acting in the negative direction. Thus, if the streamline is horizontal and theta is zero, the weight component in the stream direction is also zero. So term one, the weight term, can be rewritten as such. The second and last term, an important force acting on the fluid, is that of pressure. Recalling previous knowledge on pressure fields acting on an element, pressure is not constant throughout the fluid because of its weight. So we can say pressure will be a function of both S and N. So let's label the center pressure of our element as P. So pressure is going to act on the right side of the face and on the left side of the face. Again, we're only concerned in the direction of the streamline. So we're going to say that the pressure here is going to be P plus some delta P in the streamline direction, and here it's going to be p minus some delta p in the streamline direction. Now we could write out a long Taylor series for determining what the delta ps is, but for a very small fluid element, we could use the first term and obtain delta ps is equal to the change in pressure with change in s times the distance over 2. And the reason for that is we're interested in this distance right here, which is delta s over 2 and we're multiplying that by the change in pressure with respect to S. So the total pressure force, which we'll designate FPS, acting on the fluid element is gonna be the P, on the left side P minus delta PS times the area delta N times delta Y minus the pressure acting on the right side P plus delta PS times the area delta N delta Y. You can see quickly that this is gonna be equal to the following. And plugging what we know for delta PS in, we get our force due to pressure. So for those of you keeping track, we're going to sum up our delta forces in the streamline direction as the weight force plus the pressure force. And this looks like the following. I've taken out the differential volume and, and we're going to plug in what we know for the other half of this equation where you have density times the differential volume times the velocity and the differential velocity with respect to s. 
This allows us to cancel out both terms of the differential volume and rewrite the Bernoulli equation. That's not the Bernoulli equation that I showed at the beginning. So what are we missing at this point? I don't recall a sine theta term above, so let's figure out how we could rewrite sine theta. Referring back to our fluid element, we know that this angle theta, this is delta S, and using typical Cartesian coordinates, we could say that this is delta Z, that sine theta is just delta Z over delta S, which we could write as dz ds. So now we could change the sine theta to our dz ds and approach our pressure term. So we know that the differential pressure, dp, is going to be a function of the differential pressure in the s direction and the differential pressure in the normal direction. However, along a string line, dn is going to be equal to zero. Thus, we could rewrite our differential pressure as just a function of s. So we'll go ahead and plug that back in. And lastly, our velocity term can be rewritten so that we have an ordinary differential equation. And we'll take that term on the right side, plug that back into the middle part of our equation, and it will look like the following. This equation simplifies to look like this, and we can integrate this. At this point, we have a pretty simplified equation that equals some constant, and the only assumptions we've made so far is that it follows a streamline, that it's inviscid, and that the flow is at steady state. So we don't know if density is going to change or not with pressure, so we can't integrate that out. But if we assume that it's incompressible, then the density and the specific weight will stay constant, and we could rewrite this equation as the following, where the pressure term plus the velocity term plus the height term along a streamline is going to be constant. So we have our Bernoulli equation. And this basically implies that given the assumptions we've made, that we could calculate along a streamline the conditions at one point, knowing the conditions at another. Check out some of the example screencasts to see how we apply Bernoulli's equation to certain systems.